welcome to week 7 of Advanced Native Mobile Programming and this week we talk about RX Java and uh, Android notifications okay let's start the class with our RX Java okay so what is RX Java yeah RX Java is a actually is a huge topic and it covers a lot of different things and it could be taught in whole semester i guess and it can uh, stand alone as individual lecture i guess okay um for you for you in for your information that rx java is actually a, a third party library it doesn't related with android and in fact that rx java can be applied to different platform and different language and of course it doesn't belong to android jetpack okay but um most of android developer use it and at least you have to know what it is and what it can do to speed up to uh, to give advantages when you go with your android yeah when you develop an app with android kotlin okay so what is the definition of rx java yeah rx java is reactive and synchronous programming paradigm okay uh, don't worry about the term yeah here i will explain it uh, one word per word here okay so what is reactive programming yeah reactive programming is a programming paradigm oriented around data flows and the propagation of chains what is what that means is that this reactive programming is uh, the way we we uh, talk we see the the object yeah the object of our program yeah the object that can uh, react or that can changes depend on the other objects okay so that's called reactive programming so for for instance yeah for instance if we uh, if we have a shopping chart, yeah, we have a shopping chart page or activity, and then we can fill in the quantity of each single item that inside or that listed inside the shopping chart, and we change the quantity. What happened next is uh, the total value, the amount of rupiah that we have to pay, will changes whenever we change the quantity the amount of uh, value that we have to pay also changes here yeah. this is called reactive programming okay so we do something with the object and the other objects responds uh, with uh, our actions okay so that's a call reactive programming it reacts in it reactive to other things okay reaction to other things that's it that's called reactive programming okay another example is just simple button listener you have a button and then when you click it click on it we deploy a listener and it react yeah and it react on uh, whenever you click the button okay so uh, that's called reactive programming which is derived from even driven programming paradigm okay so I hope you understand that that reactive programming is a kind of uh, programming style that uh, object response or give reactions uh, depend on other stimulus depend on other actions. Okay, so what is asynchronous? Right, asynchronous is opposite of asynchronous, which is um, in the synchronous programming we see the action we see the result we see the output almost immediate okay and yet in other hand unsynchronous means that a program that wait in indeterminate amount of time for the response so when you click the button you need to wait several a few seconds to see the output yeah so you see the output okay that's called unsynchronous uh, programming so uh, what the other examples yeah for the other examples for example is like a loading image using picasso okay when you work with last project you you deploy picasso library see 
and then you load up the the activity the fragment and the picasso uh, access the image from the server as you can see it doesn't appear immediately right it shows a complete image in later time a few second letters okay this is called unsynchronous which is the output the outcome of our x program executions is not immediate yeah it's uh, in the indeterminate amount of time okay so uh, that's one example of ap calls the other example for for instance is uh, you have a button to calculate a lot complex yeah to calculate complex uh, equations here yeah? for for instance to find out the uh, uh, prime number yeah prime number from um, 1000 uh, at the first 1000 prime number in in, in in number in general and that's a lot needs a lot of uh, complex equations complex process therefore uh, we set it as different thread yeah different thread so it won't disturb or annoy our ui logic main thread okay so we separate that complex equations in different thread so um, we execute it we execute the programs and we doesn't know when it will end yeah it could be a few minutes a few seconds and we don't know that okay but uh, we don't want that that executions that program process annoy or disturb our logic our ui logic main thread okay so uh that's it that's about asynchronous yeah we uh we we run a program and we don't know when it's end when the output will come out okay so uh for whole things yeah the rx java is reactive asynchronous programming paradigm paradigm yeah which means uh we create something a program that react yeah that react uh, by stimulus of other object in unsynchronous means okay so the goal of rxjava of course is to improve the user experiences it means that we want to create application that looks responsive it can uh, trigger immediately yeah when uh, and it prone uh, when when error comes out yeah it does uh, it can handle itself and and so on so we the goal of our Java is to improve that improve that uh, user experiences okay so um, what is RX Java components okay there are actually three things yeah the three components of RX Java the first is observable uh, you already know the concept when you work with live model it's actually pretty same yeah the, the, the observable is an object that emit the data it could be periodically or emit once in their life cycle based on their configuration so we can create observable that emit data okay it can be periodic it can be timer based it, or it can be emit only once and then another component is the observers or subscribers yeah observer consumes the data streams that emitted by the observable yeah or just like a uh, e subscribe yeah you subscribe to others to youtube channel of other persons yeah we listen or we we uh we will we will get notification when that youtuber uh, upload a new video yeah same same thing also apply it observers here and the schedulers schedulers is a component that, that tells observable and observers on which thread they should run okay so remember the observer and observers it requires attentions it could uh, annoy the main thread our main thread and once again because probably the observable is a kind of unsynchronous program which is we doesn't know when it's end so we should put it in different threads okay it's uh it's all done by the schedulers all right 
Okay, next is the dependency. How to use the RX Java in our projects? Okay, the RX Java is a reactive asynchronous programming paradigm, and it's the this this the it is the library, the third party library that available on different languages, just not um, for Android itself. It's available for different languages. So in Android Studio, you can simply implement this the RX Java 3011s yeah so if you want to do that you have to open your last week or week four projects and go for the uh, Gradle scripts here okay we have to add one um, implementations of the RX Java okay and the other dependency that we need is this RX Android. The RX Android is an extension to RX Java. Yeah, it provides a scheduler to run code in the main thread of Android. Yeah. So the uh, the functions of this library is to create a scheduler that can uh, handle or manage where and where the thread of the code should be put put on okay where, where the code should be put on different threads i mean and it's the main usage of rx android and actually there is another dependency which is called rx kotlin actually it's the same thing yeah with the rx java but rx kotlin is just only the wrapper yeah the wrapper of rx java it augments the RX Java library with an app and an API designed with the Kotlin in mind using extension. So, um, RX Kotlin basically uh, give the the greatness of Lambda extension, Lambda functions, and different kinds of Kotlin style in it. So you can create a same programming of RX Java with Kotlin in mind. Okay. You may add it and you need to consult on the website how to use the, the different uh, extensions that speeds up our programming. Okay, let's do the simple things first. Yeah, I give you all several, a few examples, but it once again, I told you in an in a earlier lecture that the RX Java itself is a huge topic. Yeah, so um, the rest of things you need to self study. Or need to find out by yourself okay so it, at any in this course in this lectures in specific uh, I'm only explain a little bit of uh, the RX Java okay so uh, how to create an observable right so you can use your um, last week project yeah so you have a main activity First, we do it in main activity. Remember, your main activity uh, here uh, react as the central part of everything. Yeah, it it does have the what is called uh, the 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 main yeah the main part, and it loads up different things in it. Okay, using um, MVF MVVM architecture using navigation. Okay. So let's create some things here. Fall. Oh, I'm so I forgot. I forgot to sing now. Okay, before we do that, we have to sing now. Right. In order, uh, uh, to to make sure that the proper the 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 library uh included in our projects here. Okay. Create with model. Okay. So let's take a look a bit of our observable. Okay, done. You create the variable of observable equals observable. Yeah. So uh, need, you need to import. Make sure you import the the this one. This IO reactive RX Java three core. Yeah. Import that one, and we call just. Yeah. We call the function of just. So um, inside the just, we going to emit several data. Okay, the just the just method it used to emit the 
data specific data it could be single string it could be an object and so on okay and it could be more than one thing so for example um let's take a look here example so if we want to uh write the first data first emit second emit and we have the third emit right so we have three data that emitted by observable okay and next um we're going to capture or listen to that observable so in this case we create the observer yeah the object that listen to the observable okay to create the object first we going to create a variable and because this is a kind of abstract object yeah so you need to create an anonymous anonymous class of it of observer let's take a look in the reactive jasa i'm sorry it's not in abstract it's a kind of interface as you can see here is i here so um it's the same thing actually you need to uh, create an anonymous class of it means that you have to create the body class immediately in here and because it's interface you have to implement the functions under the observer so alt enter on the object click implement member and just everything plus ok so you have on subscribe on next on error on complete yeah you need what you need to do next is delete the to do yeah delete the to do okay right so what is on subscribe yeah on subscribe just tells us that it begin to subscribe the observable okay remember the observer job is to subscribe to listen the observable whether the observer emit data it will react yeah the observer will react depends on the whatever it's observed okay so the on subscribe we just simply send the log message let's say let's uh, write something here don't forget to import this log and the tag is messages therefore we can find it easily in our locket and um we write the message begin subscribe right okay so what is on next yeah on next is a method method that will, will be called when there is a new data emitted by the observer okay the objects that is emitted by the observable can be found in argument parameter of this callback yeah so this on next will call if the observable send a new data okay it's just like a streaming data send a new data uh, uh, for our cases here it's just simple um one two three strings okay so means that we can when when it uh, when it observe a new things when it's when it emit a new things yeah for example yeah for example here in later time you can emit another things yeah another things you um it will capture yeah it will capture by this on next okay and the parameter here is the data captured by this observer so we can lock it yeah we can see it using the lock message um whatever data it is so we write data equals dollar t yeah remember dollar t is the parameter okay so um what is the actual example of this observer yeah for example you create a game that uh it has uh in-app downloadable downloadable content yeah downloadable downloadable content so you put this observable and observer in a different threads and the observable is an unsynchronous program uh, that output the data streams which is download something from the server maybe download several files maybe download a single big giant files uh, i don't know okay but uh, one thing to be sure is the observer listen 
uh, the files and uh, prepares configurations of that files in this onyx every byte comes in uh, our smartphone our applications and sometimes error happen right yeah probably the connections error probably the other stuff happen error so we have this on error yeah on error will will trigger if uh, there is an error occurred on observable okay right so we can copy paste this one and we uh, just do e and it should be error dollar e dot to string right and complete simply triggered when uh, the observable the observable done emitted yeah done emitted is so so uh, means that it's done emitting with the data stream you will receive this callback this indicate that there is no more data to emit from the uh, observable so we write complete okay so um we're going to inspect this one yeah this uh, messages this log okay so next thing to do is to use the scheduler right to use the scheduler to manage uh, where we should put this um uh, process in different threads or not okay so it's all inside this observable object yeah this one observable object dot subscribe on okay schedulers dot yeah you can subscribe on the current thread the io thread or you can create a new thread for your uh, observable so where we should put where, where, where should we should just okay so if you think that the observable is a kind of complex process and we don't know when it ends yeah and we afraid that will annoy our logic track yeah we can create a new track for it okay for but for this instance we just put the schedulers io okay the scheduler IO indicates that uh, this is the IO thread, while the scheduler new thread will create a new thread to run observer or observable. Okay, right. Next, um, there is another method chaining here dot observe on. So um, if the subscriber subscribe on is used to tell where we should put the observable in in what thread and the observe on is for the observer itself where we should put this observer in different thread so in this particular example or example here we use the the android rx yeah the rx android remember in the um gradle scripts we import this rx android so this is very useful if uh, we want to use the class of Android schedulers here and we want to run it in our main thread okay in our main threads so the scheduler itself can run in IO and create a new thread for it but if you actually want to run in main thread you can do it in here yeah you can you do it in here because <clears throat> um, as of course we want to uh wish we uh we sure that it doesn't uh, uh, uh disturb our main thread process and finally we call subscribe subscribe to the subscribe by observer okay so what is mean the whole thing is we create an observable that emit three things the three strings and then uh, we put it in the scheduler io thread and the observer also we create a new object for it and will trigger uh, whether it captured the data and trigger something for it when we put it in main thread 
and finally we tell this observable that you have been subscribed by the observer okay so um what is the result let's uh launch it in the emulator here so i open the locket so you can see clearly in here okay so i'm going to going to pause it for a moment okay uh, so this is the result so the locket tells yeah okay don't don't forget to search messages here we, because we uh we use tag message yeah and we can see that um the observer is observing the observable the first output is begin subscribe of course it's it's from here the unsubscribe and it capture the emitted data from observable one by one so it emitted one by one the first second and so on it captured by the observer and finally when when the observable is done emitting yeah because this final this is the final data it's trigger the complete so you you will see here the complete okay right so how we can make it more simple right so we can also delete the observer yeah and uh, we can directly create a new observable that we have with the symbols uh, with simple codes okay so let's create a new thing observables yeah immediately dot just yeah so we send same thing first emit second emit and third emit and we can write subscribe directly subscribe in here and enter and it it has three um parameter yeah and all is lambda function so you can start with creating this opening and closing curly bracket here so the first lambda is for the next functions yeah so the first is for the next function actually it has one parameter of um data that being captured by the subscriber okay so we can delete this it yeah because it only have single parameter remember in lambda you can if you want you can remove the parameter if only contains single parameter okay so um we do the same thing log d right messages all right and we are going to show the data that being emitted dot um data dot it dot to string right oh no need yeah okay sorry no need to string because it's already in string just to learn it right so the first part of lambda is is similar like the next methods which is it trigger it capture the data and it locking it out in locket the second lambda is used to if some error can uh, occur so we call lock e messages comma error um dollar it dot message dot to string right the last part the last lambda is a complete function so you can simply write complete here okay so in this versions as you can see here we simplify the, the whole things no need to create an observer object no need to create independent observable we can directly create observable here and of course we can directly create the observer object in subscribe yeah of course you can add another thing like observe uh observer on and so on and so on you can add more in here yeah but 
let's take a look for the example let's run this one okay let's play it and take a look the result okay okay this is the output the same output from previous example it's captured the first emit second emit third emit and finally complete okay let's continue um we can create delayed observable yeah, or timer yeah what is delayed observable is an observable that emits a particular item after a given delay in millisecond or seconds so let's take a look at these codes yeah so first we create observable dot timer and then we define uh how long the delay it, it will be five in what uh, units so five seconds right five seconds and then we can call subscribe on subscribe on scheduler io observe on android scheduler main thread and finally we have subscribe okay so the subscribe simply logging out the message five seconds yeah the message is five seconds and of course this message will comes out will capture by the subscriber five seconds later okay now we move on to android notifications okay so the rs java itself is not uh is it's only a few topics that we covered here and you need to self-study for it because it's actually a huge thing yeah it's different things that you need to understand okay so we move on to android notification because um it related with what we're going to do in our today talk tutorial and the android notification is a most basic and compact form to display the notification to the user it can contain icon it can contain a title small amount of content of text and so on okay so uh, for instance you uh, given a notification when whatsapp message comes up to you and the other things of the others app also can trigger the notification in your applications okay so um you will you will get another topic of notification letter in after midterm yeah with uh, another point of view but because in today's tutorial we need notification i give you only a glimpse of what is notification is for and the simple execution and simple programming to show the notifications but moreover it it also have different or broad topics of notifications so in to create a notification we need the builder same thing as when you create the dialog or a dialog builder okay so the notification compact builder is responsible to create notification object and you need to define the icon you need to define the title you need to define the body contact body text i mean and the priority yeah the priority that determine how intrusive the notification should be how important the notification it is so uh, to create the notifications we call the notification combat builder and we define the channel id it's a must in android uh, api level 26 and higher but it is ignored by older versions okay the channel id is like a um, indication like an identifier that connected between your application and the notification itself okay so it must be unique yeah it must be unique and it's a string and therefore we can rely we can use our um prefix our strings taken from the package name so um we hope that our package name is so unique and we can add one string and another string into it and hopefully we can create a channel id that unique very unique okay and we set small icon remember this one is your icon you can add your own icon using the vector asset in the drawable and we set title text we set a small content text and we set the priority yeah of the notifications okay 
After you create the notifications using the notification builder, it starts as this object, builder object. And we trigger, we trigger the notifications by calling notification manager compat dot from context and call the notify and this object of the notification builder dot build. All right. So to make the notification appear, you can call the notification manager compat dot notify and you passing out the unique ID. It actually an integer. You can create random integer, of course, for the notification and the result of notification builder build. Uh, for now, it doesn't matter what number that you read here, but later on, it's uh, you have to memorize. You have to somehow to record this number for different purpose. Okay, so remember that, right? So the following tutorials is um, is to demonstrate how to create notification with the help of RxJava timer. So in this in this case, we want to create a notification that triggered after five seconds. We are going to create. We can achieve this with RxJava timer. Okay, we wait for five seconds, and the notification will show up. Right. Yeah, as you can see in previous program, that notification requires a context object, all right? Therefore, we create a function in main activity that hold the context. Yeah, main activity actually can access the context object. And one thing, remember that our project, that MVVM, it's all centered in our main activity as the central part. Remember, uh, the, main, the main activity, it holds UI, yeah, UI fragments and it loads up different fragment into it so actually we can, we only have one activity and it react like the controller of the your ui so therefore we can make sure that when we create notification we can get access to main activity context object okay um because we want to create um, notifications in fragments, yeah, inside the fragments, not in main activity itself, we have to find a way to call the notification function in our main activity body content. Therefore, we can use the component object for this example. So let's jump to your main activity, guys. I think we're going to comment this out. Okay, we no longer need it. So first thing in this very top of main activity, we creating we create component object like this. Okay, so first we create our uh, property private var um, instance that type of main activity and it could be null, right? It could be null. Okay. We define our object, our variable instance, yeah, of main activity. I will explain it why we need this variable, yeah. And this variable refer to itself, refer to the main activity itself. So we create an init comp, uh, init part, yeah. Okay. Um, I want to recharge your memory about the init part. Remember when you define a class of course you can create constructor here right this is the constructor of the class but remember this constructor is only to assign name assign parameter um, and save the parameter to variable in immediately okay but what we we want to do something we want to create program in the constructor yeah how can we do that and we can have this in it in it is a block of codes that will be executed at the same time when uh, it's construct the object yeah so the init itself it's a, 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 a line of codes yeah that will execute it when and never it the main activity created okay it's similar like we do something within in our constructor so you can write initial code here yeah in this case we going to is uh, set this instance this instance of main activity to itself 
instance to isa instance equal this okay um you may be wondering why we did that okay so next one we create show notifications inside the component object show notification okay so it has title of string secondly have content of string and finally it can hold icon right so we have three parameter title content and icon could be from drawable so in at first we create our channel id channel id okay remember channel id must be unique so we depend on we um actually depend on the package name okay so you can access the package name by calling the dollar instance yeah instance uh, to access the package name you can uh, get reference from context object because this instance is actually the main activity itself it can access the context object including the package package name right package name okay you have to uh, save uh, uh, red question mark as a save now here and we prefix it with underscore or minus whatever you like so instance here we get minus dollar instance and we're going to access the app name the application name yeah the package name and plus with the application name if you're wondering what your application name is it located in here i think in in the rest in the values and it's on the strings yeah the app name is idv week 4 c okay so we will create a channel id that um combination of package name com g2 solution idv week 4 c minus idv week 4 c hopefully it will unique enough yeah okay dot get string and we get it from our dot string dot app name right remember to put the question mark here and you have the unique channel id that combination of package name followed by your application name okay after you done creating that um channel id next we create the builder we we create the notifications um object okay so we start with builder or notification builder just like in the slide and we getting help from notification notification compact uh, have, uh, be careful when you choose the import here choose the android 8 core because the notification compact is another android ktx extension i already explained that in previous week yeah okay so we have builder we have dot builder right okay so in this case we need to access the context remember we can have the context using the uh, the uh, instance right so we're going to set this as question mark here oh wait a minute why it's getting straight throughout the British is that all posted oh yeah because it requires channel id yeah? the second parameter is channel id so we provide that comma channel id okay right right now next we call what is uh, the apply functions yeah means that everything you everything you read inside the apply is a part of notification builder okay um, means that um, instead of you if you doesn't use apply you have to write manually builder dot set icon build dot blah 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 and so on but if you use apply you can directly access the uh, function of the build the notification builder itself yeah okay the set small icon yeah the, it's coming from the icon 
which is this one okay and we set another thing set content title is taken from the title the title of the parameter set content text is from the content content and set style notifications compact dot big text style actually um notification can be modified as like a different uh, style with different style it could be giant notification it could be smaller small notifications you can configure it in the set style method and we define priority priority equals notifications compact dot dot yeah you can set priority high low max min we can set this as a default priority so um this one is not a function it's just property of the notification builder yeah so the notification builder have this priority we set is prefer it as notification priority default the, the the final thing to do is this auto cancels yeah it boolean uh, means that uh, the notification will cancel automatically when you tap on it yeah another way is we can create a like a pending intent pending intent but it's beyond of the scope i will teach that later that uh, this pending intent is used when you tap on the notification and we going to do something with it for instance create activity load up activity and so on and so on okay after we create the builder this builder uh, object next we set up the notification manager equals notification manager compact dot from once again we have to uh, uh, we need access to instance dot applications context and then yeah this is um, not correct here the application context application okay just like that and next um we trigger we show the notification by calling notify with whatever number you are writing here as a notify notify id and we um we call builder this object dot build all right so we prepare the configuration first and then inside the notification manager dot notify we build the notifications and the notification manager with will notify to your application your smartphone okay so um we done creating show notifications okay next up is when we should and how we can trigger the notifications actually it's not a logic logically enough yeah but uh, for this tutorial we simply just want to demonstrate to you that we can create notifications and combine with rx java okay let's um load up the student details so you have this student detail layout so drag and drop a button here okay uh, make sure you constraint to the top to the left make some distance into it i think it should be 24 right and change this text create notifications and the button should be pdn notif refactor and we change the style because uh, there's only uh, already have the main button here so this one should be the secondary and probably the third button so you can search text buttons and choose the material component text button here enter 
and it looks like a link like a text link here right so we going to create the um, listener for the button okay so let's open the the student list detail fragment student detail fragment dot kt and um, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry I still not yet created the observe functions uh, wait please wait a moment okay we back again yeah so yeah so I just uh, add several item in it yeah just like you do in your homework yeah so as you can see here we have arguments we have observe view model in the pseudo detail fragment and we load up the data yeah from the left student left model of course we also have the progress bar okay so let me close it for a moment okay so what we do next is we we will add the rx timer r java timer and we're going to trigger the notifications uh, in delayed with five seconds okay so first we uh, add these codes in the student live data observe functions and you open up the i mean sorry this one the observe view model here yeah under the view model after it finished load the data of particular student we start it in variable of student equal it why because we need it later in our um button of notif set on click listener okay so let's add hit button notif that set on click listener sorry so be use this one okay as you, as you can see here we have double it yeah this it is referred to button notif uh, the view of button notif and this it here is referred to the student uh, live data student ob student object i mean okay so um because we're going to use we we need this data we need this data inside our button notif therefore we create temporary variable here okay so we can use it inside our button notif and we create this observable uh, io reactive dot timer delayed of uh, five seconds uh, time unit this one you should you should choose seconds okay and followed by subscribe on schedulers dot io and then observe on Android schedulers dot main thread and finally we call subscribe which is uh, triggered yeah sorry it should be dot subscribe and we use the lambda versions it should be uh, a trigger whenever it's finished uh, the, the RX Java timer finished delayed five seconds it will trigger the subscribe okay and then we going to call the notification from main activity main activity dot show notifications because this show notification is um, is a companion object of main activity therefore we can have access by calling its class main activity dot show notifications okay and we have student which is refer here and then we can set this as title the student name as title dot to string and for the body message should be a new notifications created and finally we have um, icon so I, I forgot to add the icon so you can go to drawable right click new factor asset and look for person 
icon this one click on it okay next finish and we can use that person icon in this one yeah r.drivable.persons okay baseline person 24 okay let's try this out hopefully when you click a person here and it shows up load up using volley and the create notification listener won't exist until it finished load the data therefore that that's why is the reason we put the listener inside the observe functions when it done load the data it's apply the what is called the listener into it and then when you click on it um it will trigger the rx java timer five seconds delay and then hopefully you can see the notifications on the notifications smartphone okay let's hit the play buttons now and take a look the result okay so we click a student here and we wait up until it loads up and click the create notification with for five seconds okay right okay so the notification appear and if you click on it it does nothing but of course later on you can you can add the pending active pending impending intent into it so it can react okay uh one thing uh, guys i forgot to explain to you in and of course i focused i forgot to add in slide but after this i will add this one okay so in android api level 26 and above it's very important that you create the notification channel okay create the notification channel so you can copy paste this code from the slides and and use the util yeah put it in the util.kt and this one is a functions to create the notification channel so i'm going to explain a little bit about it so it it has different parameter into it uh at, at first it looks or it checks for the build versions okay the build version is with above 26 and then it requires you to create the channel to create the channel at first you have to define the channel id which is this is the same thing as we do in in the main activity we uh, we compose it from the package name and combine it with uh, the, the application name and then we create notification channel by calling this channel id and the, the application name and the importance is the priority yeah the priority is a uh, integer constant here and then we set the description we show speeds pets yeah show pets it means that if the chat if the channel can shows icon in the not if the notification shows or not it's boolean yeah boolean true and false and uh, using the notification manager we create the channel all right so this is very important and don't forget to call the create notification channel in your main activity so in the on create we call the not create notification channel and then after it created the channel is ready and you put different parameter here for instance the the priority uh, the show pads just uh, the application name and the description it doesn't matter you read uh, uh, anything you like here so after you done this run your codes and create notifications and you will see the notification shows up on your screen okay because uh, i have letter simulator it requires you to create a notification channel okay okay i hope uh, you um getting along with my explanation here in rx java and um notification under notifications yeah um just like i said earlier that rx java is full of different complex things 
and you already know little a few about of it yeah so in later time please uh, study it by yourself for example you can explore others rx java function like flowable single maybe disposable and other stuff okay and of course in and advanced notifications yeah you you may study the broadcast service remember our current notifications is only work if the application is running on the foreground but how we if you want to create a something like alarm that that still triggered even though the application is no longer exists is not activated yet not active in the foreground how can we create something like that you have to learn about broadcast service alarm service and then the pending intent is used to uh, give a listener whenever you tap on the notifications and it will trigger something and of course the notification itself can be styling for example you can add um, custom sound custom sound yeah when listener shows up it's also trigger your custom sound and so on so it's notification itself also complex topics and don't worry about that i will back with the notification letter on the uh, on this course okay uh, i hope uh, you enjoy today topics and i hope you learn something new in here and see you again after midterms yeah bye bye for now.